on the delivery ward after attending cadaver dissection. So next group of students will come fresh in the morning and then directly come to the delivery ward. It has been observed that the deliveries or the uh, births uh, which has been attended by students coming from the cadaver dissection has increased the amount of purple sepsis for the mother and for the kid. So this has been going on for years. And just in 1857, that is from 1847 to 1857, this, this 10 years, this observation has kept like that. It was in by Louis Pasher. He, after 10 years of such peripheral sepsis, he just told this can be prevented. This cause of peripheral sepsis can be prevented by just washing the hand with soap. And the other or soap about the Kaikalona in the peripheral sepsis it took 10 years for us to get this to get this simple infection the instruction of washing the hands so again it was again in 1857 to 1867 joseph Lister told carbolic acid can be used for this infection and then initially the dentistry initially it was wet finger dentistry people directly keep their finger inside the patient's mouth and do surgeries extraction and all sort of things and now gradually becomes full of a sterile procedure of the dentistry and I would like to introduce prions for people who are not heard of that. What are these prions? These are nothing new. These are very old people. And uh, this is, if you ask in a search in the net, this is what you will get. So what are these prions really? These prions are uh, found out in 1982. These are non-living organisms. And there are few diseases which are prion. But what is important to the time of concern is, all known prion diseases affect the structure of the brain or other neural tissue and are all currently untreatable and universally fatal. This coronavirus has been reached only for some 35-36 years. This prion is surviving in the world. And now, what's the next question? Are prions in our country? Are dentists are exposed to prions? If you ask me that question, this is the answer for them. Of a prion, this particular time before an intraperitoneal or intraventricular infection, and research research indicates a oral transmission may also occur. So, a dentist can possibly transfer prions. So, what is this new thing? Something suddenly we are telling about a prion, or which we already know. What is more concerned? Anyhow, if we follow the, all the viral precautions or the safety measures, or the use of instruments, we will go get rid of prion. That is not the status. The reason is these prions cannot be killed or cannot be eliminated by regular autoclave cycle. Even if you use a perfect autoclave cycle with a 120 degree centigrade 15 LBS pressure for 15 minutes, you cannot eliminate prions. And this disease has been present in India for so long it has been reported and it is present in the entire world scenario. So what, why we are not so seen is the incubation period. See, we know with the 15 to uh, around 15 days of incubation period, the COVID is causing so much destruction in the world. That's why we are more concerned. We are completely locked down. Consider this prion data shows that the incubation period is 10 years. 10 years of incubation period for prion to get down and these are fatal. There is no medications for that. So I'm well in advance before that. So this prion is an important concern apart from bacteria, virus and fungi. If we keep this prions in mind, we will already would have been followed the strict infection control protocol. So I would like to tell a good example. So how to kill this prion? These prions are killed by high temperature and high pressure autoclaving. For example, if you're autoclaving at 135 degrees centigrade at 13 LBS pressure for 30 minutes, I'm repeating 135 degrees centigrade, 30 LBS pressure for 30 minutes, it completely eliminates the this is the cycle which is recommended. So I would like to uh, remind a uh, um, uh, very funny situation. After completing my post-graduation, I was very well aware of this prion during that time in 2011. So I went to the hospital where I am concerning. I directly went to the OT and other staff. Uh, staff, I like to um, have a different autocular cycle. I would like to see the autocular unit. The sister was very happy after coming to this collision chamber and asked, want to see. Okay, doctor, you can see we have a very big autoclave. There's a very huge horizontal autoclave in one of the biggest cold center hospital in Europe. I went there, I was happy to see it is all she told her water cycles are there. I told sister, I want to keep the temperature at 125. Where is the control? In the Bakan Thirpana steam, in the Bakan Thirmana sterile, and the Bakan Thirmana common nerve the Kapro, and we change it. Okay, fine, let me only check it. I saw the temperature monitor. 
the maximum temperature indicated in the monitor is only 120 not even 121 so how do i go for a prion protocol so this is a status in most of our time so please kindly consider this prion also added to the covid so with this introduction so it just to bang out the alert go to know what are the risks we are exposing ourselves and this prion protocol very strictly followed in one of the central government institutions in, in example immense in back as a very prion protocol they since they treat all the neurological centers i have been there as a patient that under when my dad was there so very protocol this public institute has a very good uh, control for all those things so kindly remember this and always go for a high pressure and high temperature auricular cycle in the coming scenarios so the blood borne pathogen just we discussed all this is virus bacteria fungi just for the completion sake and uh, the next biggest concerns in dental practice is hepatitis c infection what is hepatitis c infection see we all got a hepatitis vaccination please remember this hepatitis vaccination is only for hepatitis b okay hepatitis c do you think it is not there in india it is there in one to two percent of the populations and many hospitals do know before an operation surgery major surgeries we always need to have hepatitis b c hiv all these things are must many people miss out this hepatitis c and there are a lot of cases we have in our present things and uh, what is the dreaded thing about hepatitis c there is no vaccination like hepatitis b if it comes we have to die out in some time and with the liver cirrhosis i would like to remember a very good case of mine what we managed uh, thing uh, there was a patient referred for full mouth implants from namakul one of the dentists referred so i was happy to treat the patient we did all the viral screening hepatitis b c everything is negative i delivered a full mouth implant for the patient and delivered the process is in calling after that like uh, sometimes like the patient lost my communication and when i was in leave for some time during my marriage or some other work so that time what has happened is the patient is reported with the mandible fracture the mandible fracture happened exactly in the site of implant so that we have to remove the denture we have to remove the implant and uh, the, one of our, of our colleagues in the department has done a plating surgery 8 months before this happened some 5 years before on 6 to 8 months before the dentist who referred the patient called me doctor uh we need to fix a denture back for the patient what happened to the denture ma'am she told like uh, uh that the patient got a fracture i think you remember uh at that time after since the answer the patient is going for liver liver transplant he got a hepatocellular carcinoma since the patient is hepatitis c positive now what is the risk i remember very well that i have done pakka uh, uh, screening hepatitis c was negative hepatitis b everything is negative and fracture the person saw the previous viral report because it was done years before that showed it is b c and other things are negative the treatment was done now who all at risk the people who treated the fracture the person in the prosto department who handled the dentures who saw the opd the leper the person who came for suture removal and the person who did surgeries the sister who washed and everything everyone is at stake so what do we do now so this is the fearful status of hepatitis c so within years the patient may go for hepatitis cellular carcinoma and it is not easily treatable and we don't have any vaccine for that so the next biggest concern i would like to emphasize for dentists is hepatitis c infection which is highly transmissible with the blood and the saliva so in my practice i would always tell if the patient is hepatitis c we might be having a heroic attempt to treat the patient we may have a personal protective equipment we may have a complete things all those things that is everything is okay but the environmental control after you treat the patient you remove the pp and go off how the clinic or operation started disinfected that is the same like covid like scenario which is very dreadful for hepatitis c patient also so always whenever you go for a surgical procedure i would recommend all the young dentists and people like who are practicing the procedures to go for hepatitis c to clear before example even for an infection procedure i would strictly recommend to go for an hepatitis c screening so like uh, uh, apart from that we have a percutaneous injuries which is not of much concern of course if you go for a needle prick uh, with the patient is uh, positive or negative uh, we need to go for uh, one information like to dispense is like if suppose we got a needle prick 
consider the patient is positive where do we get the retroviral therapy please remember all government hospitals and dispensaries are the place where this retroviral drugs are available for free and you tell me there is uh, your healthcare professional you got a needle prick and uh, always take the blood uh, sample for the patient take a phone number for the patient always check the patient with the blood parameters and the viral screening again after 6 months to rule out whether the patient is in inter- uh, window period and check for yourself also until then you need to sweat out there is no other go so always remember this uh, retroviral therapy is available in all government dispensaries which all general hospitals and doctors can be can avail it for free in case if they have a need to click on always you should have a quick register uh, to document it and quick register is not to punish the people just to change the rules what has risk the pick who got the pick so who has violated it just to change the principle so that it can be um, violated and remember the majority of the infections of to the doctors have happened while needle resheathing just while needle resheathing only the majority of the needle pricks have happened and currently the recommendation of needle resheathing has been abolished you need to just after giving injection you need to just transfer or throw the syringe of the needle into the puncture proof container the procedure of needle resheathing though it is explained in manamet book like a single handed scoop technique this has been abolished time before and there is no practice of needle resheathing at all the reason is the maximum number of pricks happen while needle resheath so that's um, information i think so now coming to the point why infection control is very important in this because um, this is a article from um, uh, the latest article which has been from the um, uh, other uh, literature 2018 and 2020 there are lot of literature published why uh, dental practice is more spread this times uh, even a patient doctor can have an hospital but dentist is more because we generate lot of aerosols lot of aerosols where it flies out anywhere from the uh, hand piece or from the ultrasound scanner or from the per we have hella lot of aerosols that are generated and flies in the atmosphere and i would like to tell all dental clinics um, have enough amount of aerosols spread on them so well, in this juncture i would like to ask one thing what do you all think dentistry is a sterile procedure specialty or a clean procedure specialty what is a sterile procedure specialty sterile procedure is the one where the sterility of the instruments on the sterilization or the or the aseptics of the wound is maintained at all possible times what is a clean procedure specialty like many people think ena doctor sterilization and dentistry la ya vaaikulla ella organism irukapode vaaikulla avlo alukku irukapode ne enna da sterile organism instrument kondu ponalum patient vaaikulla vecha one it is going to get contaminated so anala nama enna oralukku clean panna podum is it that no it is not like that so now so let's see the little more details of this so what are the types of surgical wound to understand the whether is a dentist is a clean or for a sterile procedure specialty something like this, something is called as a clean wound what is clean it's a got a femur fracture uh, dr kanish am i audible things are okay sir Hello. your uh, voice is uh, sir voice is breaking feedback or i am speaking sir. to myself hello sir no problem sir, just back? now sir just now okay no no sir this slide alone sir this slide alone sir this slide alone okay fine then uh, i will put on the headphone and try so that this is on record again yes okay. sir yes sir yeah um am i audible now sir better sir dr ganesh am i audible better no yes sir okay fine yes, sir. so if we go yes, to the types of surgical wound what is a clean wound clean wound is the one where if for, for example you get a long bone fracture like a femur fracture what happens the orthopedic surgeon opens up the wound in a sterile theater the fully covered gone he exposes the bone and the wound is not contaminated anyway you fix up the fracture close the wound and cover it there is no contamination example heart surgery and orthopedic surgery is called a clean wound surgery what is a clean contaminated wound consider um, surgeries by ent surgeons or a dental surgeons where you put an incision in the oral cavity or in the body part immediately the wound will get contaminated with the body fluids for example with the saliva or the nasal secretions or the gastrointestinal secretions immediately the wound will get contaminated that is called a clean contaminated the contaminated wound and infected with the worms or pus is present is called so in this scenario if you ask dentistry always it is a clean procedure specialty because all the dental procedures or invasions are clean and maintain the sterilization till it is done tra- uh, till it is working uh, till 
the instruments need to be worked in the patient's mouth you need to maintain the sedation till the end don't consider after auto clearing you can direct open instruments for the pouch it is all always need for example like a sterile cloth or in a sterile tray those things are much important so now who does the bell so like in a clinic or in a practice setting who is responsible for infection control in practice enna na sonnalana attender kekka mattendranga students kekka mattendranga all those things are there but remember whatever happens in the clinic it is the responsibility of the dentist in charge of the clinic so or the biomedical waste management this responsibility of the dentist so it is we have to take care of the situations to control it so we are the one who needs to tie our or we have to tie the bell and ours to make it happen so please remember that the responsible person for infection control is only the dentist not the attender we have to get them do by whatever means possible okay so this is the article for hepatitis c virus infection through threaten you all more um and it gives a long lasting liver infection this we all discussed we'll move around so we need always need to have a blood spills and uh, stain kits in the dentist thing is mostly contains hydrogen peroxide and just we'll skip through these slides uh, fast uh, my another concern is my instruments are not sterile so will i go for a strong antibiotic what do you feel about it uh, if you think like we all know the answer like antibiotics are not a substitute for that and that's why all the textbooks will stay in you know, the give antibiotics only if there is a source of infection even if after extraction if there is no uh, pus discharge if there is no site of infection just a pain killer will do the job if to follow good infection control protocol or if you use a good sterile uh, procedures that's my recommendation also always consider um, you know, antibiotics are not a substitute for sterile procedures or not for substitute for violating the uh, infection control protocols so i would like to uh, project a good study by crawford so what the is this study means if saliva is colored red so we will just we will consider the situation and see what is situation so this study uh, aerosol generating instrument to the patient mouth so the, we can see the splatter on everywhere and the next image will show if the splatter is glowing we can see where all the splatter is getting uh, deposited in the forehead of the patient goggles mask neck of the patient chest um, even in the wrist beyond the gloves uh, in the arms in the uh, body near the hip near the thighs we can see in the assistant's um, uh, chest elbow neck everywhere in the right bottom picture is a very uh, important picture we can see even though the person is not covering the mask properly always cover your nose with the mask and the head cover is not there consider the same amount of splatter will be there on this patient's hair also so what are we going to do we know we will take the goggles and throw it away we will change the mask after every patient and what about the area between the goggles and the mask how many of us have the habit of washing our face with soap with uh, eyes closed do we always do, uh, have a head shower after every day yes of course few people will do but every time we can after completing the procedure after removing the mask and goggles we may just control our hair with the hand again you get it everywhere so wearing a head cap is always a must and that's why the current recommendations like always wear a goggles or a face shield all these recommendations are very strict uh, in advanced developing countries after the operatory my strong recommendation is all the operators you have a shower over there by the uh, end of the procedure remove all this is have a shower and go home with uh, safely without transmitting the infection to your family or even to your car or the travel uh, what you are going to do that and always keep your mobiles and everything out always use a bluetooth setting uh, to uh, use the mobile phones in the, the mobile phones are the one which are highly contaminated in the dental practices and if you take culture from the mobile phones you will have all the possible organisms um, uh, which may be uh, infecting our uh, um, uh, patients and ourselves that is what the scenario is there so always try to avoid mobile phones use a bluetooth control device so that you can address all those things so and always have a face wash and consider this situation if you are going to wash this situation first we will be splattering the water and again we will be opening the eyes how do we control the organisms or virus getting into our eyes or into our nose or into our mouth while washing face how do we control it? though we go for a hand wash face wash or a hand shower so except using a physical barrier method like a face shield or a good mask or a head cover there is no other possible way that we can protect from exposure of this so this please remember this picture this amount of splatter is happening in all possible days in all our aerosol generating procedures so even though we wear a good, good mask and goggles is not at all enough a head cover or a head cap or a face shield is most interesting in today's scenario
and what about air conditioner uh, so there are a lot of uh, things like whether we can use secondary incendiary batteries and whatever the pp is or a personal protective equipment on the suits they are advising now is it is giving it is a non pervious to water so it is non pervious to air in an um, air conditioned chamber but what the senior most practitioners will give an idea they know that the all air conditioners in uh, dental operators needs to be serviced every 4 to 5 years and these are the air conditioners which the least amount of life if you open the filter you will have a stick viscous thing which is coated over the filter those are the organisms on the organic matter from the aerosols which is sucked into the um, uh, air filter and this needs to be cleaned repeatedly so air conditioner maintenance is a very important protocol in dentistry always clean the filter and everything so always in a dental scenario i would always recommend having two exhaust fans at the higher level and the one in the lower level so that all the aerosols or the fresh air should be pushed in you consider a dental cleaning which is closed in all the areas since you do have an ac your windows will be closed and there is no other way of the air or aerosols getting outside of the room if you don't have an exhaust fan the exhaust fan is a must with the closed shutter that means only if you on the exhaust fan the shutter should open otherwise the shutter should close and the air will be contained inside so that is a solid recommendation for me to have a good exhaust fan where we have a good, you need to on the exhaust fan suck in all the air and remove it and then service the air conditioner as frequent as possible based on your concentration of patients and the amount of procedure you do that's my recommendation regarding the air and regarding covid 19 my recommendation is like the, um, the senior persons have recommended in the infection control team that to, to service the air conditioner as early as possible or as frequent as possible and there is no other go other than with using with that and uh, uh, most of us will be uh, known about the congo parota stall in erod near erod gh i'm a big fan of that stall of course there are a lot of issues in the use of uh, other um, uh, products or over there but the one concept over there see remember coco have a transparent kitchen with the glass doors uh, kanish sir hello yes sir yes sir yes sir am i audible over there yes sir audible some feedback please yes sir uh, am i audible it's clear now clear sir okay you are in coco parota now yes okay. sir fine so the uh, the transparent kitchen over there is a big attraction Ah, okay thank you the transparent kitchen over there is a big attraction for many people people come over here we look of course they make good parottas also so though they make a good parotta there are a lot of salt which make good parotta this one is really famous for the transparent kitchen and people would like to come and see how they make parotta the completely transparent kitchen so how many of us have the confidence to keep a transparent infection control a good new practice or even though it is possible not possible immediately whenever you are going to establish a new practice a new setting always have the confidence to give a transparent room where the patient if they wishes they can have a visit to see how the infection control is working so that's the confidence you instill in the patients on reverse it you should be so strong to come okay you can come and see how things are manufactured so the, these are the things which you need to inculcate in the coming days practice um, which will be more interesting for the practice point and gives more confidence for the patient and ourselves so now coming to the hand washing and scrubbing um, no i'm going to example having food be washed in a different way and after consider we are in a clinic and we have a good uh, biryani mutton biryani we have and after that we want to go and see the patient how do we wash hands and the aim of washing is so that the smell should go off all the fat should go off completely so before surgery we wash hands in different way why there is a technique for hand washing the reason is that the regular hand washing frequently misses many areas like the red zones are the one in the shown in the picture where these areas are frequently missed while hand washing so by following a proper hand washing technique which is commonly seen i, I have a video of that also time permits we can play that video on the later slides um, so if that is there it covers all the areas of the hand it's not just the hand washing which is going to kill uh, or remove the orifice you have to follow the hand washing with the proper hand washing technique which covers all the surfaces with the proper timing and with the cut in the nails so that is what is there uh, when to clean the hands and now we have we all know we need to use a hand sanitizer and there are options of hand washing also being a dental profession do you consider we go on hand wash hand washing will take 2 to 3 minutes is every time you need to dry it you need to apply 
it every time it is not possible to think so do we need to wash hands all the time no it is not possible so there are clear recommendations which tell like if you see your hand if the hands are visibly soiled if there is some dirt or some blood or something which is in your hands if there is no visible soiling you can just use a alcohol based hand sanitizer and the recommended point of time in a dental setting the recommended solution volume is 1.5 ml consider you are using a most common sterile pump so remember this is not just an ordinary pump all the sterilium hand sanitizer pumps are highly efficient pumps which constant bottle is full or the bottle is half or in the empty level one complete push always delivers 0.75 ml of the solution for using a hand sanitizer you need to use two complete pushes that means you need to push the hand sanitizer completely dispense solution and take it in your hand and rub the completely dry off that is the more important thing it not just the sanitizer coming into contact will kill the organism the hand sanitizer should completely dry only when it dries it completely um, what is called it desiccates it only during that time there is complete aseptic uh, of the hand so please remember that just putting hand septic will not be there it will take around 1 to 1 1.5 minutes or 2 minutes if you using a fan it will take some 2 minutes so 1 uh, minute or something time so definitely it will take 1 minute not just and remember to push it completely of uh, between for hand sanitizer two complete pushes 3 ml 1.5 ml of the solution is a must for this so with this i'll move on further so uh, for the what is best the plain soap is always good and which is better is an antimicrobial soap and which is best is alcohol based hand rub is always best in disinfecting the hand i would i like to remember a study done in my pg institution they told like uh, there uh, in my days when i am doing a post graduation in 2008 uh what was done is we have this red color live by soap in all the wards for hand washing in the things so some pgs did a study by taking control over the soap it has shown that there are all possible hazardous organisms are living over the soap the reason is that see soap is not going to kill your bacteria or virus directly soap in water it reduces the surface tension it just floats the organisms or the dirts in the surface if the soap is not mixed with the water if there is no surfaction action happening soap can do nothing even it can bear the organisms please remember soap is active only when you do that so now thus then in this coming point of time there is no use of solid soaps or bars in dental practice or medical settings only you can use only liquid soaps which hand pumps where you need to elbow operate and take it out there is no use of solid soap don't have any solid soap in dentistry at all it is highly hazardous and it transfers lot of infections always have liquid soap or a liquid antimicrobial soap is the best thing or you can use anti alcohol based hand rub solution so what are the benefits like it is a rapid and effective antimicrobial action it improves the skin condition and you see it is better than the soap and more accessible than since you can have hand sanitizer anywhere uh, but you can do a hand sanitizer while speaking to the patient or after the procedure or before starting the procedure with doing some other work also so the limitations um, if the hands are visibly soiled or liquid you have seen we need to store from high temperature because these are alcohols it will uh, flare up and the hand softeners and ground powders may build up what does this mean consider you are going to use a hand sanitizer after removing the glove what happens after removing the glove you just wash your hands what what there are few things which are happening this glove powders are made of corn starch what is the purpose of a powder in a glove the reason number 1 is just like a powder we use for a carrom board striker it just smoothens it whenever you are wearing a glove if your hands are wet you the glove sticks onto that so whenever you are wearing a glove we need a powder to smoothen it to release the friction so these are the lubrication the powders are the lubricants for the glove to put what happens after we remove that we all found the powders we clean on the crevices of the skin the hand we see there will be a lot of cracks or the crevices will be the powders will be clicking and so dry after washing even if you put a hand sanitizer what happens is all this corn starch will get clogged in the thing once we use a hand sanitizer solution it evaporates and it deposits and see even this hand sanitizer will cause some effect on the skin 
it fixes the tissue alcohol is a fixative like what we use for a oral pathology of the tissues like you put those alcohol based hand sanitizer over the skin it fixes the tissues and the same way it fixes the glow powder to the skin and deposits to the skin and corn starch it is an organic matter fungi can grow bacteria can grow and it causes itching in later days you frequently use it so always wash your hands completely and dry your hands completely so that you remove the powder completely and then put hand sanitizer so that is an important consideration from my aspect of you and the best option is going to always use a non powdered glove and you can wear a sterile glove over the non powdered glove this way you can uh, by over gloving you can avoid this repeated uh, powder exposure to the hands that's my recommendation for that so um, we can use a hand lotions or when you're using a um, uh, there i will come to there are some soap hand wash which can skin emollients or the skin softener which are incorporated into the hand wash solutions uh, that you can do that i would like to recommend i would like to uh, put forward the older method of scrubbing like uh, scrubbing the hands with the brushes before surgery or using a, a circular uh, scrubber for the fingers or which has some rough surfaces these procedures are completely banned now these are no more followed there are still still few hospitals which follow this hand scrubbing technique in the right ladder aspect and this is no more followed because the scrubbing causes micro abrasions on the skin and it causes more uh, injury to the skin and the All the deeper organisms just settle inside their coming. So this method is more follow. The method of brush is not now. Um, the, what do you think about uh, after washing the hands? Uh, with what we need to wipe our hands dry? We can use air dryer, which pushes all. Suppose you have a, a cleaning with a lot of aerosols in there. If you use air dryer, what is this? It just pulls the air aerosols there, and again it blows on your hands. again your hands may get wetter and if you use a reusable towel uh, from the morning you will be using the same towel after five or six patients your hand towels will get contaminated it will be wet so what is the thing is you can use a small autoclave towels where you can give 10 to 20 towels uh, in a small pack you can get it in a old sol or a supermarket where you can autoclave and keep it there for each patient you can use a small towel wipe it and put it in a bin to wash it autoclave it there or the same the common tissue paper the regularly commercial available tissue paper packets you can take like that you can put it in the bin within cloth uh, autoclave dry cycle you will have sterile tissue paper which is very cheap and which provides a good physical barrier even for spreading on the tray table if you want to keep a sterile instrument you can just spread this uh, sterile tissue paper and keep the instruments and it will prevent your tray and other things from blood contamination and after the procedure you can take it and throw it away there are thicker tissue paper cells available in 1 ft by 1 ft size also in all this uh, uh, you can purchase them you can autoclave them i have been autoclaving this the thicker tissue for more than 4 to 5 years this works really well so you can layer and hand wiping also a cheap and effective method and please consider the uh what is this uh, see there are lot of plastic bands but do we have any plastic bands of medical equipments like we use a lot of iv tubing uh, saline bottles all those things when it comes to health conditions these disposables are of less concern please use them properly and wisely don't lavishly use it use the disposables properly in medical can don't consider so much for plastic plastic one paper to ship for all this use and uh, and compromise the health and uh, as are all those things that's my recommendation and i know few people will be against this but still this is the point from my concern okay and this is a uh, hand wash solution where it is a ph controlled hand wash solution with skin emollients added to that so if you go for a skin hand wash or uh, you can use this n number of times it will be transparent it will be soft after washing this is the same company who is manufacturing the sterilium has done this bacteria in 5.5 i've been using for more than around 10 years it is gives a very good thing and it is gives keeps the hands soft and it prevents from irritation you can always try this or any other brand which is having a skin emollient incorporated into that may be of good use for you so on always remember utility gloves see uh, what is utility glove the utility glove is a thing where it is a thick glove which has been advocated for commonly we are uh, people for uh, washing utensils uses utility glove but this utility glove should be used in dental practice for removing the infected material we see um, uh, most of this we will use instruments whenever the clinic attendant comes and cleans he or she many times will take with the examination glove are sometimes the bare hands also you have seen that also happening if you use a routine examination glove they, they it might get punctured and it might get uh, in the morning and completely after cleaning everything that changes the glove if if at all she we 
so i recommend strongly recommend the utility gloves and there are few recommendations for using this utility glove also always have a good fitting rubber gloves there are thick vinyl gloves also are available which will be difficult to handle and which have which reduces the dexterity of the hand and these rubber gloves are very easily available in any supermarket for example jay krishnas or um, uh, whatever supermarket like the similar thing is having uh, kannan supermarket everyone is having these things or anything online also you can have always buy the glove which suits your size and please remember these utility gloves are autoclavable so every day after use you can you auto clear the auto, uh, utility glove and keep the water dry dipping then you can have a metal clip and a, a, a bend stainless steel hook where you can cling on to that to allow the water to drip you can auto clear with the clip and reuse it every day of, of course it will come for a month and it will wear off change it and throw it away it comes around it is available from 80 rupees to 250 to 400 rupees this is available so you can always try to uh, utility keep a utility glove and do, uh, you keep the utility glove with the attendant's name written on that so that if it is written like so always use a utility glove and uh, that is more, more important uh, always try to reuse the utility glove after auto cleaning per day and uh, the procedure of wearing the gloves is called donning and duffing so why there is a uh, what is an importance of uh, wearing glove so the reason is that so see we we have two surface in the glove one is a sterile surface and then other uh, unsterile surface so uh, with skin we cannot completely sterilize in all point of time the skin will have enough amount of organisms in all the point of time so what do we need to do is we need to completely uh, wear a sterile glove in a uh, way where the glove surface is not contaminated so such a procedure is called donning so there is a video of the available the, the pictures will tell about that and if time permits we can play the video or we can share it so you can all see on the most important is called duffing so why in now if you are operating the patient gloves how many of you use the glove like an elastic and throw it in the dustbin so once while removing we should make sure the contents of the glove surface should not splatter on you should not splatter on the environment should not splatter on the patient and your attender also and so this condition we need to remove the glove in a particular way where the glove juices or the sweat in your glove hand should not get splattered or the outside contamination should not contaminate your hands while removing removing the gloves is a very good a very important thing to be practiced every time and it's must for your attenders also to get practice so donning and duffing and when to change the when or the glove is torn and don't wash the any glove with soap solution so it is not recommended increases the porosity and so causes contamination and i like to make a point see um why should we wash our hands before wearing sterile glove anyhow we are going to wear a sterile glove and we are going to use a glove uh, while doing the procedure why should we wash our hands the answer is very simple the only main reason of washing the hands before putting a sterile glove is in case of any tear accidentally happening the contamination from the hands should be minimum if you have the glove clear up skin lend or organism come a varanu ngra reason na to wash our hands before glove wearing procedure so please remember before the uh, hand gloving the idea of washing is to prevent the contamination or the remote possibility or less possibility of glove going thing what is called as uh, spray wipe spray technique what is a spray wipe spray technique is have a disinfectant disinfectant and you spray on the surface wipe it with a sterile uh, paper or something and again you spray it and do not wipe it allow it to dry that is called as a first dry and then cover this this is called as a spray wipe spray technique uh, okay so this is for the surgical wound just uh, there are preliminary final and draping the patient and what is a laminar air flow so this is of concern i will come to the um, high pressure chamber i will speak about laminar air flow this is followed in operation theaters where whenever you open the door in an operation theater room the air from outside cannot come in only air from inside the ot will be gushed out through the hepa filter which is placed in the roof of the ot the air if you open the ot theater room the air will be pushing out so that's called as a laminar air flow and it is a various levels will be there to protect the contaminations so those things and now we have a glass plasma sterilizer which is available and recently i saw this glass plasma sterilizer and aims uh, which is very good and it is very little faster than the conventional thing also and it is having good efficiency also and there are plasma hand washers available which may be coming up in near future just to update you regarding the 
um, uh, new things. And coming to the Spalding's classification, critical, semi-critical, non-critical. So we all know what is critical is whatever organism, uh, instruments or material which comes into direct contact with blood is called critical. Which comes into contact uh, semi-critical is uh, may get exposed. And non-critical is chair, floor, all those things. But in the current scenario, there is no such considerations because everything is getting sprayed with the aerosol and the possibility of getting infection and transmitted on the entire surface is very high. So the Spalding's classification is of less use in this current point time. But all critical items needs to be minimally autoclave and semi-critical needs to be completely disinfected and non-critical we need to wipe it or use at disinfection levels. So if you ask me, is infection control expensive? I will always tell yes, definitely expensive. Is infection control requires more money, more time, manpower, space, planning, execution? Yes, definitely yes. But it is all really worth doing it. So and while having the uh, clinic, consider in this COVID scenario, we need to clean the entire room. So what are the things we need to do there? You, uh, we need to plan, if you are setting a dental practice, we need to know what kind type of paint we used for the clinic wall so that we can wash it, clean it, and if you want to use a defogger, it should be uh, resistant to that. And what kind of furnishings we use, if we use a soft bedding or a fur or a mat, we all know that mercury poisoning has been, after mercury poisoning, the use of carpet has been banned in dentistries, and there is a minimata resolution has been done, and the carpets, what kind of using floorings and screens. For example, if you use a screen like a blinders, which you fix, and you can never take and wash it off. So you can do the recommendation is the, you should have to consider everything. You need to consider the walls, furnishings, which can be cleaned, which can be wiped, which screens, which can be taken out, washed. I would recommend a ordinary cloth screen in clinic where you can take it, wash it, dry it, or if you want, you can autoclave the cloth and put it back. That will be more hygienic than using a fancy uh, um, gliders or a blinders, which will be fixed forever. And maximum you can do is use a, a vacuum cleaner or a wipe of the soap solution, which hardly removes anything. It's there we are going to stay there. And um, regarding the use of spirit, isopropyl alcohol and sterilium. And the use of surgical spirit has long been disputed and there is less use in the industry. If at all, if you use a spirit, you always go use isopropyl alcohol or use a sterilium. So sterilium is the best solution or for wiping the surfaces, all those things always use a isopropyl alcohol. Excuse me. Sorry, the kids are playing and making a lot of noises just to want to mention them. So if you use um, isopropyl alcohol, uh, what do you use? When we know in your clinical practice, if you put a uh, hand piece burst in the spirit, it dries up and it leaves a white foggy residue or the uh, it leaves a sticky residue over the things. Why? Because it contains oils or which uh, stays back. So if you use isopropyl alcohol, it completely desiccates or it completely evaporates and it gives a much better desiccation and efficiency than spirit. So, in clinical scenario, always use isopropyl alcohol, which is available in any pharmaceutical companies or the uh, medical drug stores, and uh, go for sterilium for hand disinfections. So laser, surgery plumes, and all those things are there, and uh, which needs to be considered. For example, you're using a cautery or a laser, always go suck the fumes, and it has been evidence are there, like these fumes may carry the virus transmitted and in the air. If you get a smoke, if you use a laser or if you use a cautery, the smoke comes out, if it carries a virus, again, you are inspected. So always make sure these plumes are also sucked up with the high vacuum suction or other things and the handling the histopathological specimens consider they are infected and handle them safe the one small clinical note what i used to tell is once the, you protect the uh, these specimens what are the urine sample container will give you a good locked thing which uh, fluid loss with where there won't be any leaks and before putting the specimen only you have to put the label name it and then after putting directly put it in a ziplock cover and then transfer that will be a good uh, method of handling the histopathology specimens and um, there is some uh, minimum distance between the patient's eyes patient's mouth and the operator's eyes so minimum distance is 16 inches and keep the proper positioning of the patient so that the splatter will be less always follow this it is 16 inches is the distance between the op patient's mouth and the operator's um, ice. That is the minimum distance we need to keep up to prevent the, to minimize the splatter. So um, handling the extracted tooth for academic purposes, suppose you want to keep the tooth uh, for extraction or you want to practice a root canal thing, I prefer you take the tooth and autocrate and then use it for the purpose. 
So do not put hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide um, it uh, removes the moisture content. It is not an effective thing. Always you can wrap, wash the tooth with a utility glove and then wash, remove the black academic purpose. I think that will be a good thing. Kanish, am I audible now? It is going well. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, Hello. Sir. Yes, sir. It's clear, yeah, sir. Thank you. It's clear. Okay. So uh, extracted teeth and um, uh, there is some, something called as uh, plastinization, which is followed in Australia. Like they mix the extracted tooth with the plaster Paris and bury it with uh, like a block. So that has been followed. But here in India, we can dispose it with the uh, according to the color coding of the biomedical waste management or if the patient decides to have the teeth with her, tell them that you need to autoclave it and give it to them. Don't give the teeth like that. Then the attenders may take it and see it in the hands or they may throw it. It is our responsibility. If the patient wants to take it, autoclave the tooth and give it back. So, or if they use it for uh, academic purpose also, autoclave the tooth and then use it for the purpose. So, um, that's what we have seen that and laser electro, this is also we have seen coming to the fumigation. So, what is um, fumigation? Just we will see in the future slides. I have added for the COVID scenario also. Um, what, okay. Like, how to treat? Suppose we are using a exclusive uh, dress for the clinic. Suppose we are having a surgical suit or an operating suit inside the clinic. You go into the uh, clinic, you have a changing room, you wear a new dress for the uh, clinic and you have an exclusive new slippers uh, and you have a head cap and mask. How to clean or you wearing a good white apron? So how to disinfect the aprons and your surgical drapes? So can we treat like a regular cloth? Can we put it in the same washing machine or we can it washing with the wash with the other cloths? See, the concern is, Yes, of course, you need to wash it with the washing machine. But I would like to prefer if you are using those things, have a bucket which is filled with half bucket of uh, hypochlorite solution. Consider the Clorox or the ALA or the RIN Supreme. What is available? Uh, RIN um, uh, cloth whitener. What is available in the market are all hypochlorite solutions with the four percentage hypochlorite solution. So you can always keep a half bucket of uh, uh, the solutions filled, uh, diluted in water and you can take the dresses or drapes of linen in a sterile way like so that you won't handle the contaminated surfaces. You can wear a utility glove or your glove especially for that and take those things and dip it in the uh, uh, so bucket of water over there leave it for one hour after one hour take it rinse it with an utility glove and thereafter you can treat them like regular cloths so that is my recommendation like even the clinic can towels if you are using them wash it uh, before the, uh, after dipping with the sodium hypochlorite solution that is a regular uh, cloth whitener you can use it and that's how you wash the uh, drapes and the linens over there so on your apron also so please do not use a two liter pepsi bottle in the dental chair always use the bottle which is uh, uh, given by that because it may have a coating to prevent the uh, fungal or the algal growth inside that frequently clean it wash it and then use it and change the water lines or the tubings in the dental chair every year that is my recommendations and um, that's what you got donning and Thing we know uh, we have seen that how to disinfect the mobiles the best way to disinfect mobiles is not to use them and if you want to you disinfect the existing mobiles always use their uh, wipes for example a wet wipes or a baby wipes so what is over there try to um, uh, wipe it with that if at all you need to use your mobiles always put your mobiles in a ziplock container where you can use it um, with the glove and after that you discard the ziplock container and just throw it away. That's what the next best option it is available. And uh, UV sterilizer, all those things can be used to disinfect the mobiles also sometimes. Switch out the mobile and keep it in the UV sterilizer and recommend a time and then you can take it. But I don't know whether the mobile gets damaged since it is non-heat. It is only the radiation. Just I'm recommending that for short disinfection. So uh, does really the cooker type autoclave um, works? We all know the autoclave and the pressure cooker works in the same scenario. I would say the cooker type autoclave is not a good option in dentistry. The reason number one, it takes more longer time. We don't have any good control over the scenario. Next one is it does not have a dry cycle. These cooker type autoclaves are used in conditions where these instruments are used immediately. For example, yes, the autoclave will happen, but the instruments will be wet. There is no good dry cycle over there, and you need to take the instrument and ha directly use it. That is called how the uh, autoclave use. And when dentistry, what do we need? 
we need to use instruments after storage we need to pack it neatly in the pouch and then open it in front of the patient and store so this cooker type autoclaves are less used in dentistry always goes for a standard b class autoclave or the autoclave which has a good drying cycle that's my recommendation for the autoclave and uh, whenever you are autoclaving instruments like needle holder or not reforceps always open the instrument so that the steam can penetrate the inside the hinges or in the open faces and then clean it with the brush on the recommended solution after soaking and then use it so um, yes of course please consider all our autoclaves or our hand pieces are autoclavable including the air rotor straight hand piece and everything will have 135 degree marking which will be put on that or autoclavable so please autoclave the hand piece and use there are lot of uh, uh, maintenance units are there which you can put it in pouch and cover it and do hand pieces should be autoclaved in my recommendations so uh, don't think like if you autoclave the hand piece it will go off the rest all those things never never happens and remember you should always use a distilled water for autoclave use a good distilled water it is a proper autoclave cycle and the oil the hand pieces in the, according to the recommendation autoclave will last forever and they are designed to be autoclaved for all the time for use and is it possible for us to use a uh, autoclave Clothed hand piece for all the patient. Yes, of course. Is it? Are you wearing the same dress every day? No, we have different number of lot of dresses are there. We have lot of sets of shoes, slippers. We have different gloves, and same way we need to have minimum number of hand pieces. So multiple hand pieces to be used in dentistry. At least the ten hand pieces we need to have. We can wash it, autoclave it, pouch it, and reuse it. depending upon the auto load of your clinic on the your autoclavable time, we need to have more hand pieces for that. So that's the answer for that. Uh, how to store we have to store the instruments in a pouch in a little height where it is free from moisture and other rodent disturbance should not be there and remember all these instruments which are wrapped in cloth can stay sterile only for 3 days after 3 days we need to reautoclave so if you are using a pouch it can stay longer times so Uh, glutural decal cold sterilization yes for the plastic other instrument which are heat sensitive where you cannot use it always you can use a glutural head cold sterilization you need to follow the recommended protocols you need to activate the solution it comes for around 14 days and after the uh, recommended duration you need to change the solution if it requires an activator powder to be added also you can use there is a simple uh, manufacturer instructions given for example is sidex is a brand of the good glutural decal solution you can always follow that you can dip the solution recommended point of time and wash it and then you can always use it so this is the uh, routine autoclave what we commonly have this is from the uh, this is available in most of the clinics um and I'd like to recommend uh, like we need to have a separate cleaning area and hand washing area the clean instrument cleaning area and hand washing area should not be the same you should be separate and dedicated after clean the instrument you need to inspect for damage or visible clots or blood somewhere over there pack it and then autoclave it that's how it goes and we need to have a regular heat sensitive We have like this. There is a for ethylene oxide sterilization or gamma radiation. There are separate color indicators are there. I don't want to go so much detail of that. So we go with the thing. And this is one important thing I like to emphasize. This is a chital forceps. So what is a chital forceps? Chital forceps are transition instruments. This chital forceps needs to be autoclaved daily. And the chital forceps are used in such a way that the handles will become unsterile since you are holding it, and the tip of the instrument will recover. Will remain sterile all the time. that means we have a autoclave with a chital forceps holder is a cylindrical stand which is available you need to put the chital forceps inside that thing and wrap it in a cloth and autoclave it every day and we need to cover the handle like that and keep so whenever you want you can just hold the handle take it out after retrieving the sterile instrument so you need to keep it back inside and cover it with a cloth that's how the chital forceps should be used remember chital forceps is a transition instrument whenever the tip of the chital forceps gets contaminated or become unsterile and that is an indication that you need to reautoclave it or change it if you take the sterile instrument with an unsterile chital forceps there is no point of sterilization at all please remember the sterile instrument should remain sterile till the procedure is over all still it is can contact with the patients but till then you need to maintain the sterilization so that's the consider is a hot air oven uh, there is no big use this glass based sterilizer uh, which was frequently used for uh, sterilizing this endophiles has been not recommended at any point of time there is no current recommendation of using glass based sterilizer in current scenarios so uh, we will just skip few slides for paucity of the time and now the hand sanitizer there are two types one with the alcohol another with the glutrol dehydrated gluconate solution uh, uh glutrol dehydrated gluconate solutions put better or uh, perfect uh, alcohol based on true permal they use a racemic mixture so that is also be equally good but with the chlorhexidine it, it gives little advantages but is not take up but there is no much evidence i can get for that. 
that. So you always use a cling wrap uh, in areas where you need to remove the wrap and all those things. So we'll go for that. Uh, these are the common areas where we need to uh, wipe with that. So we need this is the physical protective barrier. Even the tips of the three-way syringe can be changed, uh, which can be pushed out, and the, that can need to be autoclaved and change it at all possible times. Please remember all these things in the upcoming days. And the spray wave spray technique, what we need, and we need to flush the handpiece. So these are routine things, and there are automated handpiece maintenance units that, that is very good, where you can spray it, wash it, and you can sterilize it and get it back. Um, in the uh, next, the next most important thing in practice is when whatever we are what doing, for example, you are doing a crown operation or work, we the dental labs are the people which are going to handle them. So we are going to send the works to the lab where they get mixed up with all the other possible works. They, they again they need to deliver back to us. In this point, if I tell like a lab is a person where they mix up everything and deliver it equally, we need to give only the disinfected works to the lab. And only get the disinfected works from the lab. So, to in and out of the lab, it should always be disinfected at the source. The source in the sense, clinic is the source, or the operator is the source from the, the giver, and the lab is the source when it is being delivered. So, at that point only, it should be disinfected and then sent to prevent this contamination. Otherwise, the lab persons are highly infectious people because they get to work from all the possible clinic and the work is mixed up that all different technicians will be handling it and the all infection from all the clinic will be dispersed to all the clinics. So to avoid that, definitely you should follow these precautions. So there should be separate regulation which is coming from the lab or from the associations to make sure this infection does not occur through the labs. Um, so there are some recommendations like uh, spray, wipe, rinse or something with the cold disinfection. All those things are there. It depends upon the position and materials used. Yes, of course, RVG laboratory, we need to use a physical barrier and discard it. And there is something called as an overglow technique where you put another sterile glove over the existing glove. And after doing that work, for example, you need to pick up your phone when no one is there. If you are operating in a glove, take another sterile glove. You put it over the glove, speak over then, remove the glove and other things thrown. That is called as an overglow technique which has been done. And uh, this we discussed when to hand rub and hand wash technique. Um, this is what the, the recommendation times you need to rub it for one point uh, two to three minutes, or uh, which is absolutely when the alcohol disinfectant becomes uh, dry. So hand washing technique also that is available. We will check out with the time and the protective clothing. Of course, now the recommended PP is there. We will see in the further slides. Uh, dental water quality is always we should go for a distilled water supply only. So distilled water is always sterile. How distilled water is manufactured? The water is evaporated and the steam is condensed to get distilled water. So whenever it is evaporated, all the organisms are going to die. So that's how we use the dental unit water supply. You always use a distilled water so it remains sterile. Water quality always you should have less than 500 colony forming units. Uh, that's the recommendation. Uh, sterile irrigation solution. Please remember, whenever you are doing any irrigation, always use a fresh syringe for example you're using a tenable syringe do not take the see remember whatever the irrigation solution saline you're having is a sterile solution and please consider transferring that sterile saline into a sterile container please do not transfer the sterile solution into a plastic container and take a tenable syringe and then irrigate it all sterilization is void whenever you transfer the sterile solution into an unsterile con so container always handle it put it, transfer it in a sterile container so that the sterilization or the sterility is maintained till the end. So that's the recommendation um, I would tell. Always use a fresh syringe every time. Do not use the same syringe again. After using one syringe for irrigation, just throw it away and use a, re, uh, use a fresh syringe for next time. Um, okay, so these are the things. Okay, uh, okay. I would like to share small, small things. I think uh, the time is less. Just to skip out. These are the CSSD uh, units in my thing. CSSD is a st central sterile supply division where it happens in a bigger thing where there are separate cleaning areas. Uh, ultrasonic soaking areas where big ultrasonic units can be used to debride and cleaning and this is a dedicated distilled water production plant where the distilled water is produced and directly delivered to the autoclave. There is no storage nothing. Whenever you want it will be produced there and it will be delivered since it produces a higher volume it will take time and all these materials or cloths are wrapped in a paper bags which are named and labeled on that so that the uh, this can be impervious to that. So we have a separate tag on the date will be there and the uh, color markings also should be there and all the things. And remember, whenever you're using the autoclave, don't pack the autoclave completely. If you want to use an autoclave, you should always leave some space for the air or the steam above that. Only then there will be air circulation. And please consider autoclave works 
on the based on the principle of latent heat the heat in the steam has to condense of the instrument to make it efficient for uh, sterilization so that the steam has to have the penetrating power if you need to have enough amount of steam for the penetration you should have some space above the instrument so that you have enough steam to condense and use the latent heat of the steam to the instrument to get it sterilized so this is very important point don't pack the autoclave completely you need to leave air space for the steam to be there um, that's the things and um, this is something bovidic test uh, this is all batch monitoring test which you need you need to consider for a uh, thing and this is the ethylene oxide chamber uh, where you can keep the um, instruments with the plastic cover even if you put a plastic cover uh, and if you put the instrument in there the ethylene oxide gas can penetrate the plastic cover and you need to degas it out it will take some uh, one or two days for it to go and uh, the, I would strongly recommend we have a commercial ethylene oxide unit in our place where all these instruments which cannot be autoclaved which are heat sensitive can be put into ethylene oxide sterilization and we can reuse it it saves money even if the PPE suits what we are using maybe in time after completely disinfecting washing we can use ethylene oxide sterilizer even it takes one or two days but that can be used so um, always consider remember the ethylene oxide sterilizer also which can be part of that and um, these are the hand scrubbing and uh, instrument washing area should not be the same and whenever you are discarding the syringes in a puncture proof container make sure the syringe is completely immersed in the solution not to overflow like this and whenever using a discarding a suture needle separate the needle and the thread and put the needle alone and put the thread separately don't put the thread and needle like this it overhang it is a big contamination and it is a big hazard and always keep the um, sterile instruments covered like this here you can see the chital forces is held in a kidney tray even there is a good method where you can take the chital forces and pack it in a kidney tray like this and you use it um, this is what and there are some alcohol based wipes for disinfection and do not wash the hands and the clean to the same tray that's what I mentioned there you have to use a separate sink for washing and this thing and um, all the pre-cleaned instrument you have to put it in rubber sheet and not on that well and please consider don't keep the rubber sheet dirty like this we need to change or, uh, or uh, reuse the autoclave or you can use a disposable material or you can use a sterile towel to drop the washed instruments and then uh, uh, pack it and save it like that. So these are like um, how to discard uh, the suction fluid. So I would recommend in this scenario, uh, there is a lot of problems in using a chair, suction which is attached to the dental chair. What happens? Please consider this dental chair suction or deliberately they dispenses the suction solution into the common drainage all the suction blood or spit on whatever you're using is going into the common drainage which is not good when you have a, so much biomedical waste management control to discard the biomedical waste and how much control should be there to discard the blood and the patient spitting directly it goes into the um, drainage system so i would recommend strongly recommend a bottle based suction or a portable suction unit which retains all the suction solution and which can be treated or mixed with a bleaching solution and then the solution should be discarded into the top toilet commode and not into the common drains we are you can have a treating sink where the, all the draining solution should be collected treated and then discarded into the solution following the norms the cheapest and good solution is this uh, bottle suction which will rinse it is more efficient yes of course you need to clean it and work that have we have to do that in a, um, a good way so it is more controllable also and consider if you are using a negative pressure room which is going to come up in days or if you are going to use an aerosol containing room then to, uh, this bottle suction will be a good use you can disinfect the chamber um, uh, this thing very easily than your dental suction unit chair so always see consider using the discarded material this type of reusable gloves uh, can be washed and disinfected and like as i told you can use a ethylene oxide sterilizer to clean and disinfect this these are also highly hazard because these apparents are very commonly used in dental colleges and clinics and we should find a solution like ethylene oxide uh, sterilization to clean them and reuse them in a proper way instead of just wiping with the spirit and please consider you hold a suction um, a sterile suction tape with the attached to an unsterile tubing all these things matters more every time you will be holding the same tube again and again and again you need to find some way to sterilize this so my recommendation is to use a reusable autoclavable metal suction tape once you fit this metal suction tip, you put a tissue paper or a cloth sleeve over the tubing and cover it and you need to hold the suction tip with this sterile glove over the sterile surface and do not hold the suction tip with an unsterile attachment. 
you see you don't auto close it you just wipe it and you hold unsterile suction tip over there and you put a sterile glow so always consider using this sterile suction tip instead of those rotten plastic tips if at all if you want to use a rotten plastic tips go for ethyl noxious sterilization and then use it that's my recommendation and this suction tips are very cheap it comes around 200 rupees or 400 rupees and you can auto close it with n number of time my recommendation is there are some tip diameters i would recommend a tip diameter around 3 to 3.5 mm that doesn't get clogged and it can be cleaned easily you can have a metal slit and push it inside and clean it that works super uh how to maintain suction system so next is according to the recommendations so if you have lot of fluids where you need to suction it you need to allow it to clean and do uh, you need to follow the manufacturer recommendation that's what i would say and uh, just by suctioning and raising the chair there are a lot of protocols and lot of solutions available just follow the manufacturer recommendation for the suction thing and operating room foot wears yes, of course we need to have a dedicated foot wears or a slippers for inside the operator you need to have a shoes which are puncture proof or which are cover the foot completely without exposing and the beauty is how to wash them this is the uh, slippers in my pg institution we have as dedicated slippers but we need to wash them and clean see how the all the uh, unclean slippers are placed outside just a mat and there is a small barrier and with so much dirty slippers please remember these slippers can be washed and cleaned using routine washing machine you can take the slippers put it in the washing machine they clean it and wash it and give you need to take in the hand and clean it of course if you recommend want a separate washing machine then you can to go for that and keep a separate size gloves for each person in the clinic and all those there is wow oh, hey, oh, all of us do that and um, you need to because good glove integrity and attachment to the hand is important for handling instruments and consider cleaning the chippels uh, very often and have a dedicated slippers for your patient and for yourself so on that always have a vaccination schedule for your staffs and make sure in this covid time have all your staff checked and yours have checked for hepatitis b and other things and before starting your practice so that's it can barrier time possible all the time yes of course it should be possible there is no option um now if we come uh, now we'll go into the covid scenarios faster uh, with this things in mind we will see how we need to alter this practice for the things so um, what is this can barrier uh, techniques possible all the times so if we think like if i have a mar the 800 car and if i want to have a, a rear view mirror in a, the video attachment and if we don't have a rear view camera how what should i do of course i should purchase a rear view camera and fix it in the car there is no other go in this scenario of dreadfulness if you want to protect yourself from the infections and if you want to follow a proper infection control protocol yes definitely it will require investment definitely it will require new rm interim to be purchased it will require new change in protocols all those things are must and barrier techniques are must all the time yes of course it may increase the cost there is no other go for patient no other go for us all so uh, the um, uh, infected doctors who are dead are not allowed into the for into the cremate the ground also so if we need to prepare the autoclave room just come the things um okay so consider assistant preparation who is an assistant the assistant is the one who is going to stay with us all the times so i would recommend the assistant is the most important person who should know these sterile precautions the reason is even if you get a person who is infected with hepatitis or the covid or whatever it is there and the patient comes to you and you follow a good infection control protocol with a physical barrier everything the patient leaves your clinic in half an hour or one hour that's fine but if you don't follow the infection control protocol for your assistant and if your assistant gets infected he or she is going to be with you on all days he is going to handle your bag your mobile your instrument he is going to clean she may get you food sometime she may get you water sometime so consider the infection control for your assistant is very 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 important than yourself at least do it for yourself do it as a selfish thing that you need to have good infection control you have to take care that see we when you, if you go to a hotel if we expect the server to keep the water tumbler without dipping his hand we being a doctors we expect then unlearned or uneducated fellow to follow the infection control protocols so that he should not dip his finger inside the tumbler uh, and how much we will expect from a qualified doctor and when a person is working as assistant we should be more protected and more educated of course we need to educate them these are dumb heads will have uneducated people there is no other go it is for our own safety and precaution we have to educate them and they should be very strict in infection control them as 
because they are going to be there in the clinic all the time they are going to handle the instrument they are going to wash it they are going to remove the scrap scrap they are going to clean the debris they are going to handle everything so they are the one which should be more shrewd and strict in infection control protocol than the dentist themselves so make sure you prepare your assistant good to combat the situation and so we will go this okay so body parts and i have we have dealt with this hand angle sharps also we have done this um okay this is also we seen this now coming to the covid scenario so now this is a publication from nature in the publication in 2020 following this uh, important scenario the it has been well documented but dental persons where there is a lot of um, considerations uh, where there is lot of uh, aerosol where uh, since it's a more concern for the practice and now we we, we saw this the distancing is very important like 16 inch and proper positioning is very much important for this control of these things and much interesting thing is how do we um, disinfect the money so um, there are few people who told like yes if one once you get the currency from the patient you can uh, iron iron it you can keep it inside the tissue paper of course not like in the picture you can keep it inside the tissue paper and use a iron box to iron it so that increased temperature will kill all the infection in the money on the coin you can autoclave it or you can put it in the cold sterilization thing and the simplest solution for this use digital money use a digital transactions so um, this concern for uh, currencies and money i would like to emphasize and uh, pp uh what does this uh, pp mean there are lot of suits either you get a personal protective equipment or you can use a hosmet suit all those things so what is the recommendation is we need to have a complete protection with the aerosol entering into that so let's see what's the current recommendation and uh, this is the recommendation from our uh, dca or dental council of india which has been given so the, we start from here so the first step of wearing the pp is first wear the head cap first after wearing the head cap you go for a mask and there are uh, our n95 respirators and what is the things we need to rotate one thing above the head and uh, next thing below the head so there are some particular way to wear n95 respirator follow the protocol and wear it one uh, on the correct place and then you go for a medical uh, cover all and then wear the eye shield please follow this protocol so so that they, they are in, uh, it will not contaminate the sterile instruments and then next to go for um, the gloves or you go for um, isolation gown and then wear a sterile gown then go for protection hood uh, after this go for a waterproof shoe cover and then put a disposable shoes and then put the complete suit over that and then start it this is what the pp recommendation for aerosol and there is no such thing in um, in my view like um, what is the thing for your receptionist what is the thing for your uh, uh, assistant what is the thing for your um, assistant doctors consider if the patient sneezes in the reception or after the dental treatment if the patient goes out or he he or she dicks the finger in the patient's mouth they adjust the cotton if they want to have some fluid discharge from the mouth if they touches and go to the reception and touches the table and get, get pays and gets a change or gets a prescription or gets a medication from the reception or into a receptionist address are you not contamin the receptionist will hand over the money or the receptionist will hand over the patient this to the end of the day the, whoever is involved in the care everyone should be treated similarly that is my recommendation for that and uh, i would give a recommendation for how to manage it and uh, these are the recommendation from the cdc which is always available on the net and this dc recommendation is available in the document which has been transferred and uh, should be hand over to all the students and uh, all the dental faculties and these materials are there on the order of wearing the glove mask goggles and gloves these are easily available in the media and follow the protocols so now um they, this tells in whatever the uh, leveled area or aerosol generating rooms our dental practice is always in high level area where we need to follow all the precautions like overall dental procedures medical cap mask and enter respirators eye shield everything to be um, uh, used in common and there is no other go for that and uh, these are the waste categories what has been recommended in that and um, there are some things like what uh, dental students and interns should do and this is everyone can read through that and there are some lot of 25 recommendations as given and this we can all read through this needs to be circulated to all dental students and the things you can get it and read it is easily available in whatsapp at least by now you would have been received that and after this i would ask one thing ella panina corona varada abadina i used to tell varu ana varada the reason is there is no proven effective method till now which tells that idu ellam panninga na kandipa dental practice panna corona infection varadu abdin there is no recommendation proven technique till that till date 
நீங்க எவ்வளவு சைம்னா செட்டில் பண்ணாலும் எவ்வளவு பண்ணாலும் ஆல் தி பெர்சன்ஸ் இஸ் கோயிங் டு டெல் இஃப் யூ ஆஸ்க் மீ ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு டிக்ளைன் மை பிராக்டிஸ் ஐம் கோயிங் டு ஸ்டாப் பிராக்டிசிங் டில் மே தட் இஸ் மை ரெக்கமெண்டேஷன் இஃப் அட் ஆல் இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு கோ டு அண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் இயர் பிராக்டிஸ் எஸ் ஆஃப் கோர்ஸ் யூ கேன் கோ பட் திஸ் ரிஸ் டேக் ஆஸ் மச் ப்ரிகாஷன்ஸ் ஆஸ் அவைலபிள் அக்கார்டிங் டு யூ சோ நவ் லெட் சி வாட் ஆல் தி திங்ஸ் இஸ் மஸ்ட் மை ரெக்கமெண்டேஷன் இஸ் லைக் டு ஹாவ் ஏரோசால் கண்டைனிங் டென்டல் ஆப்ரேட்டரி like how in an operation theater or in a hospital you have a separate room like an operation theater where you do the procedures in a dental clinic you should have a separate contained closed space with negative pressure operatory there should be nothing inside that room there should be a dental chair there should be an operator and you should have two exit and entries one is for you to enter have the ppe and the patient should exit in another way that's the two entries and there is another accessory entries and you, inside that operatory the walls and floors should be in a way which should be easily cleaned wiped my recommendation is such an aerosol containing dental operatory which we need to construct in all clinics should be fumigated after each patient and what is the recommendation immediate recommendation we can have if you, you you need to wait for an hour or so for the next patient yes of course you can do on minimum we need to have two to three operators aerosol generating operators to do that yes it is more expensive and because here we are not going to see which is um, uh, if i going to tell edi india work panna na more gadana set avadha i cannot recommend anything like that if you need to do this only this is a possible way otherwise wait till the sudden is over the negative pressure operatory and in future i always recommend inniki corona naalik enno yaarukum theriyadu so we have to be prepared for everything in future also so the aerosol containing dental operatory is a solid recommendation for um, uh, in my view and as of now immediate ipo enna pandrathu practice ke enna pandrathu college la enna pandrathu abdina we instead of see ipo ella dentist to go to a common place avanga avanga clinic poi if you go and practice it will be more risky more initially my recommendation is like you can have a set up a community dental pra- clinic for example for example in erod we can have a um, place where we can set up a community dental clinic with 10 operators remember it is easy to control the infection in one place there in multiple regions in college also if you want to start up uh, emergency procedures we can have a separate room that is a recommendation also we can have one unit which is close to the ground floor or where the patient enters in one few operators where we can have and uh, in that particular thing we should have an individual chambers like that the aerosol containing room you put the patient inside one operatory do the procedure take the patient out fumigate it lock it wait for 2 hours then when the next patient comes do it in the next operatory minimum we should have three to four things and in a community setup the dentist and the patient should take slots for example i am organizing a community dental care in, in this town means i should have 10 slots i the dental the doctor i have a patient to treat on emergency basis when can i come they tell okay doctor morning 10 o'clock you should get the patient also there by 10 o'clock both the doctor goes there you treat it remember you should have a common place for all the dental supplies even in your own aerosol containing dental operatory or in a community setup i would recommend so even if you are having a four to five dental chairs all the material supply should be a common source the thing is suppose you are doing a class 2 restoration in a aerosol containing dental operatory we whatever materials you are required a gac filling or air rotor and this take only that instruments and get it inside the operatory and make sure your operatory such an aerosol containing dental operatory should not have anything else nanna no, no, not your certificates not your prescription not your pad nothing should be there none of your uh, decoratory things uh, no instruments from the clinic should be there at all so you can have it all in other rooms or things in the aerosol containing operatory you have only the required minimum patient doctor chair and the wall should be there once you are done with the procedure remove the pp discard there according to the base have a hand rub and push the patient in another way you come out in another way so that is what the definite solution in upcoming days in my view and we need inside this negative and uh, inside the operator we should have a negative pressure operator yes of course it is expensive it is not there available at least keep it in mind we need to have negative pressure operator in future in some time there will be many factors will be there recommendations will be there who will produce provide such thing it is all going to come up in short time don't think today is not there 
there or um, i want to open my clinic immediately after lockdown yes there is no options we all know the facilities are not there but we need to have all this to save ourselves pp wearing area and i would like to tell one more thing this pp is a disposable and are more expensive we cannot offer for 200 300 rupees for um, for each patient in pp yes of course it is right we cannot offer but see these are the current situations in few days when few months there will be reusable pps which will be appearing in the market which you can take them which you can wash them you can reuse it with an autoclave or you can use ethanol to sterilize so those days will come but your mind should be prepared we should know what is required a kind of aerosol operator is required we need to use a pp for each patient which they have a negative pressure operator fix this in mind and search for these things to get it incorporated into practice so don't look for lucrative or cheaper options to immediately go for a practice and risk our life and our um, families and instruments and see after this op- uh, in the aerosol containing operatory once we use an instrument we have to drop the instrument in a small door through that once we push it out it should go into a disinfection solution you cannot handle the instruments directly after that like you have a towel tissue paper dispensing in an aeroplane you can just a slot will be there you push this instrument into the slot those instruments will directly go and fall into the disinfection solution after the recommended time take it wash it in autoclave so that there should be separate patient exit um suction apparatus as i have discussed already instead of using the chair based suction always use a bottle suction so that it contains the fluid and it contains the air exhaust outside also if you're using a negative pressure you need to have a closed space and all the hinges doors everything should be silicone or rubber shield to prevent air entry and there should be minimal air kind of fumigator yes of course there are lot there is not good evidence or study which tells that the fumigator completely kills all the virus and please remember but this is the best possible thing available in my view because the fumigator is the only thing which can cover or involve all the 360 degree surfaces of the materials or surfaces in the operatory even if you use ultrasonic tube light or a bulb wherever the shaded areas are there the light cannot disinfect it 360 degrees ultraviolet light over surface la padavikave mudiyad it is effective yes it cleans the air it is effective on surfaces but these are adjuvants so there are few for pharma fumigator la formaldehyde based fumigators are old ones we can use hydrogen peroxide based dry um, aerosols are given um, uh, fogers are given which has more efficient there are a lot of uh, uh, clinical studies like you can have a swab culture it's only available there is no strong studies which are available i have contacted the manufacturers also even today i contacted the told there is no such studies available but consider using a fumigation after disinfecting all the surfaces or you need to use a fumigator then disinfect which will be more safer and formates like minimize the format in the operator like a pen pencil mobile everything don't take anything throw everything out take what is a damn needed inside the operatory and then do it so what is a negative pressure um, operator just you will have a thing suppose we have a um, uh, operator like this negative pressure operator is one where uh, there is less amount of air entry through a particular way and all the air is pushed out that is a negative pressure operator which is used in highly contaminated zone suppose this is your clinic room and uh, the air needs to go out of the practice like uh, uh, you should be pushed out to the pump and with the hepa filters all those things which should be entered um, so this is what is required we need to decide from where the air is entering not from another operator or the infected area so it needs to enter from an open air source and then it should be filtered out pushed into the clinic and then pushed out also so that is a negative pressure operator room always there should be even if you open the door there whatever aerosol is generated it should be shucked out of the room immediately that's an effect of negative pressure operator room this is how it looks in a chamber it looks uh, more uh, fairy but it is okay that's what we need to have maybe a simplified version will come to us in future so pp wearing area is very critical and need to get really really trained for this um, all the institutions or the clinic should use a video based education to train the attenders and doctors we need to see the video repeatedly and we need to try wearing it many number of times before entering into the like how we do a n number of class 2 preparations and a model before we do it in a patient this is also an art the wearing of hand washing is an art we need to master and learn it wearing a sterile glove we need to practice and learn it wearing a pp is also very we need to practice and then do it and especially removing and discarding the pp 
take effort and time to teach your attenders and yourself with the video based education discard it deliver the video to the attender so that they can go home and give them a ppp also go home practice n number of times and make them do in front of you keep a mock drill definitely keep the mock drill every week you keep a mock drill repeatedly make sure that they get it right and then you start with their practice i think this is all is very important before we go into the practice time training the attenders and training ourselves investing in material yes these are must and there is no other go the, like this is the aeroplane we know the uh, slots which are used to push out the uh, materials and even this negative pressure used in the it just flushes out and pulls so that is what it goes and this is the um, example of the fumigator uh, you can put the fumigation solution inside these things and it can rotate in 360 degrees and fumigate the entire room and uh, there are recommendations um, like there is a brand called citro life which has an organic compound in a, you can use this organic compound as a fumigating solution and the manufacturer Sir recommends that this fumigating solution, like Citro Life, or the uh, with the fumigator which rotates 360 degrees, can be used even when the patients are there. They are recommending. We have done studies with the patient inside the ICU with the patients. We have done uh, use this, and we have done culture, and the patients are not affected. And this is a fully organic material, and there are culture negatives for bacteria, viruses, and so this is the recommendation of the company. They don't have any articles, um, but. they have the swab test only those things are this is the information i got directly one from the horseman today i contacted the manufacturer and this is what i got so if you want to have for any studies and there is no studies regarding that but consider this is the maybe in future if you have that look for some publications or articles and then you can use it but today still consider using the fumigation then go for disinfection so let's use the best possible available so as always saying the distancing in the clinic um there was a distance in the clinic whenever uh, a patient comes in the reception always have a telephonic conversation C make the patient sit outside the operator don't make them enter inside the reception at all um communicate have the history in the telephone you know if suppose if the patient calls you have to take the history there when the patient reaches the clinic again through on telephone um, with an um, speaker you take the history of the patient record it you have to always get the identity proof of the patient why minimum aadhar should be identity in my view because the patient gets treated from you and went off then you learn that uh, you over the clinic suppose suppose we ourselves and the clinic gets infected if we need to call up the patient if the patient doesn't picks up the phone what will you do at least we should have a proof of all the patients consider if you are going to stay in a hotel for a day you are asked for a uh, other proof with the photograph to submit only then you are allowed to take a room and consider you are taking so much risk for yourself and your family and treating a patient we have all the rights to ask for identity proof and save the document along with the patient always have an identity proof i would recommend a solid take an other number and check the validity of the other whether it is that person and then start treating the patient because in case of any communication later you can catch them easily so always immediately when the patient enters in the taking the history give a mask for the patient we definitely a three ply surgical mask is must all the patient should wear the mask immediately when they come to the eating whether they are going to get treated or not give a mask for them and use hand sanitizers for the patient immediately when enter the room ask the patient to put uh, extend their hands and put uh, hand sanitizer and ask them to rub by putting the mask and using the hand sanitizer we achieve two things number one if the patient cough or sneezes you will have less aerosol spread to your clinic number one next one the patient cannot touch their mouth and mouth with their hands if you put a mask we know their mask is there we are not supposed to touch and one more recommendation i would like to make is make the patients wait for 15 minutes observe the patient whether they are having cough whether they are uneasy whether they are unwell very tired the reason is if the patient goes to a dentist and tell they are having some symptoms the dentist fails to treat and if they are having severe pain the patient is not going to tell their disease when they comes to you so make the patient sit for 15 minutes observe how well they are whether they are able to tolerate whether they are feverish whether they are coughing sneezing minimum 15 to 20 minutes of observation will do a good job in the post covid scenario for ourselves so allow only the patient and try to minimize push the attender out at all possible times and make sure each patient pays a standard amount of fee like even for a consultation you come include the fees of the mask include the fees of the hand sanitizer 200 rupees or 300 rupees for consumables you take it must otherwise in my recommendation it is better to stay home safe i will ask one question to all the practitioner who want to start up early consider we are infected or we have treated a real patient consider i am the doctor and i am treated a patient if i want to go and get myself tested 
how many days i will have for get my results back we all know the scenario if i go and tell to a government hospital that i treated a patient positive immediately i will be put into quarantine just by telling that i have a doubt i want to get my tested we don't have the facilities to do get tested immediately and we don't have any medications for treatment and we will be put into quarantine and if we go there who will take care of my our family and the clinic then if you are taking so much risk to start our practice early what is the scenario if accidentally a patient comes to you doctor if the patient calls and tell in good sense doctor i am infected with covid ah, i got 10 days before i got a dental treatment from you that time i was uh, well i was a carrier i didn't know so now what will you do immediately you run to your hospital and say immediately you will be quarantined your clinic will be shut down and do we think it is worth taking the risk i would say definitely no so that is a situation and make sure all the patients declare that they are free and all those things have identity proof take a history and keep it and then when you consider you when you are happy the, the patient history after observation after confirming all these things allow only the patient and examine the patient with the good ppe and then start up the procedure if it is an aerosol generating procedure always use it in an aerosol containing room and use a proper ppe exhaust on the fumigate the room and please consider giving all the medications in a digital format don't you written prescriptions